<laughs> it was a chilly autumn evening when Lily, a spirited teenager, invited her friends to a sleepover in her family's old, secluded mansion. Nestled among ancient trees, the mansion had a history whispered about in town. Despite the eerie rumors, Lily and her friends were excited for a night of fun, games, and ghost stories. As the sun dipped below the horizon, the friends arrived one by one. There was laughter and excitement in the air as they settled into the mansion's dimly lit living room. The flickering candles cast eerie shadows, setting the perfect atmosphere for a spooky night ahead. The night started innocently enough with games and snacks, but as the clock struck midnight, curiosity led them to an old Ouija board hidden in the mansion's attic. They gathered around, fingers trembling, and attempted to communicate with the spirits. Unnervingly, the planchette moved, spelling out cryptic messages. As the night wore on, strange things began to happen. One by one, Lily's friends started disappearing, leaving behind only echoes of their laughter. Panic set in as the remaining friends realized they were trapped in the mansion, and something malevolent was hunting them. A haunting melody echoed through the mansion's halls, drawing the remaining friends toward the music. They followed the sound, their hearts pounding with fear, only to discover an old music box playing by itself. The tomb seemed to seep into their bones, filling them with dread. As the night progressed, ghostly apparitions appeared, flickering in and out of existence. Lily and her friends witnessed shadowy figures and heard whispers in forgotten languages. The spirits seemed to be warning them of a dark secret hidden within the mansion's walls. In a hidden chamber, the friends discovered a dusty old diary belonging to a girl named Elisa who had lived in the mansion centuries ago. The diary revealed a tale of forbidden love, betrayal, and a curse that bound Elisa's spirit to the mansion. The friends realized they were entangled in Elisa's tragic story, unable to escape until the curse was broken. Desperate to free themselves, the friends decided to perform a ritual described in Elisa's diary. With trembling hands, they gathered rare ingredients and chanted incantations, hoping to appease the restless spirit. But the ritual went awry, unleashing a wave of malevolent energy that intensified the haunting. One of Lily's friends, Emma, became possessed by Elisa's vengeful spirit. Her eyes glowed with an otherworldly light as she spoke in Elisa's voice, cursing the living for their sins. The friends were terrified, realizing they were facing not only Elisa's wrath, but also the ancient evil that had cursed her. As the mansion's malevolence grew, paranoia consumed the friends. They turned on each other, unable to distinguish reality from nightmare. The walls seemed to close in, and the mansion itself seemed to twist and contort, reflecting the turmoil within their minds. In a moment of clarity, Lily realized the only way to break the curse was through a sacrifice. With a heavy heart, she confronted Emma, who was now completely under Elisa's control. With tears streaming down her face, Lily pleaded with Emma's remaining humanity, hoping to reach her friend one last time. In a heart-wrenching moment, Emma's true self surfaced, overpowering Elisa's spirit. With immense effort, she embraced Lily, breaking the curse that bound them all. As dawn broke, the mansion trembled, and the spirits within faded into the light, finding peace at last. The remaining friends, scared by the ordeal, emerged from the mansion, forever changed. The town spoke of the sleepover as a night of unimaginable horror, a cautionary tale told to generations. Lily and her friends, now bonded by a shared trauma, vowed to protect others from the malevolence that had consumed the mansion. Years passed, but the events of that sleepover lingered in the town's memory. The mansion, abandoned and forgotten, stood as a chilling reminder of the unseen forces that lurked in the darkness. Rumors persisted that the spirits of Elisa and her friends still roamed the halls, their laughter and footsteps echoing on moonlit nights. Curiosity drew a new group of teenagers to the mansion one fateful night. Unaware of its dark history, they entered, their laughter filling the air. 
But as the clock struck midnight, the mansion came alive once more, its malevolent energy stirring as if welcoming old friends. The spirits, restless after years of confinement, began to reawaken. Shadowy figures danced in the moonlight, and ghostly laughter echoed through the halls. The new group of teenagers found themselves trapped, facing the same horrors Lily and her friends had endured. The haunting melody from the music box filled the air once more, its eerie notes pulling at the teenagers' sanity. They followed the sound, just as the previous group had done, unaware that they were walking the same doomed path. The melody seemed to seep into their very souls, filling them with an inexplicable sense of dread. In their search for a way out, the new group stumbled upon Elisa's diary. Its pages warned of the curse, detailing the tragic events that had transpired during the sleepover years ago. The teenagers realized they were facing the same malevolent forces, their fate mirroring that of the group before them. As the night progressed, one of the teenagers, a boy named Alex, became possessed by Elisa's vengeful spirit. His eyes glowed with a supernatural light as he spoke in Elisa's voice, cursing the living for their sins. The group was horrified, realizing they were now entangled in the same nightmare that had consumed the previous sleepover. Desperation took hold of the group as they attempted to perform the same ritual that had failed years ago. With trembling hands, they gathered the necessary ingredients, hoping to appease the spirits and break the curse. But their efforts only seemed to anger the malevolent forces, intensifying the haunting that surrounded them. The shadows within the mansion seemed to come alive, twisting and contorting into sinister shapes. The air grew heavy with malevolence, and the very walls seemed to close in on the terrified teenagers. Whispers filled the darkness, promising unspeakable horrors to those who dared to intrude upon the spirit's domain. In a desperate attempt to break the curse, the group decided on a sacrifice. They chose Sarah, the most sensitive among them, believing her connection to the supernatural might appease the vengeful spirits. With tears in their eyes, they offered her as a sacrifice, hoping it would be enough to end the nightmare. Sarah's sacrifice did little to quell the spirits' wrath. If anything, it seemed to enrage them further. The mansion shook with fury, and the haunting reached its peak. The group, now on the brink of madness, realized that they were running out of time. In a last-ditch effort, the remaining teenagers attempted a final ritual, one they hoped would banish the malevolent forces once and for all. With trembling voices, they chanted ancient incantations, their words carrying the weight of desperation. The mansion seemed to hold its breath, the very foundation quivering as they completed the ritual. Against all odds, the ritual worked. A blinding light engulfed the mansion, dispelling the shadows and banishing the vengeful spirits. The air cleared and the oppressive atmosphere lifted. The teenagers, battered and traumatized, realized they had emerged victorious, breaking the curse that had plagued the mansion for years. The morning sun rose on a town forever changed. The mansion, once a place of unspeakable horror, stood silent and still. The tale of the sleepover became a cautionary legend, a reminder of the malevolent forces that lurked in the darkness. The surviving teenagers, scared by their ordeal, formed a bond that transcended the supernatural, vowing to protect others from similar fates. Despite the victory, the lingering fear settled over the town. The memory of the sleepover haunted the residents, casting a shadow over their once peaceful lives. Parents warned their children never to venture near the mansion, and the mere mention of its name sent shivers down the bravest spines. Years later, Lily, now an adult, returned to the town. She had heard whispers of the mansion's dark past and felt a responsibility to confront the malevolence that had once consumed her friends. Armed with knowledge and determination, she entered the mansion once more, hoping to find a way to put the restless spirits to rest. Lily's return seemed to reawaken the malevolent forces that had lain dormant for years. The mansion trembled with fury as the spirits recognized her presence. Lily, undeterred by the supernatural onslaught, delved deep into the mansion's history, seeking clues that could help her break the curse once and for all. 
In a climactic confrontation, Lily faced the vengeful spirits that had tormented her and her friends. Their whispers filled the air, accusing her of abandoning them, blaming her for their suffering. Lily, fueled by a newfound courage, stood her ground, refusing to succumb to guilt or fear. In a surprising twist, one of the spirits, a young boy named Samuel, stepped forward. His eyes, once filled with anger, softened with understanding. He revealed the truth that the curse had been born from a terrible injustice committed against him and his family. Lily, empathizing with his pain, vowed to help him find peace. Lily, with Samuel's guidance, uncovered the dark secret that had bound the spirits to the mansion. She confronted the descendants of those responsible for the injustice, forcing them to acknowledge the truth and make amends. With their confession, the spirits' anger began to dissipate, and the mansion's malevolence weakened. In a selfless act, Lily offered herself as a sacrifice to the spirits, hoping her willingness to bear their pain would break the curse. The mansion quivered, and the spirits, now filled with a mixture of sorrow and gratitude, accepted her sacrifice. In a blinding light, the curse shattered, and the spirits found their long-awaited peace. With the curse broken, the mansion's malevolence dissipated. The once haunted halls grew quiet, and the shadows that had tormented generations receded. The town, sensing the change, felt a collective sigh of relief. The legend of the sleepover, once a tale of horror, transformed into a story of redemption and forgiveness. Lily's sacrifice became a legend in the town, a tale of bravery and compassion. The mansion, no longer a place of fear, stood as a reminder of the power of empathy and the importance of facing the past. The town, forever changed by the events that had transpired, embraced a newfound sense of unity, learning from the mistakes of the past and vowing to protect each other from the darkness that lurked beyond the veil of reality. <laughs>
With trembling hands, they followed the ancient instructions, their voices shaky as they chanted the incantations. The very air crackled with supernatural energy, and for a moment, it seemed like the ritual had worked. However, the ritual had unintended consequences. One of Emma's friends, Chris, became possessed by the vengeful spirit. His eyes turned black, and his voice changed, uttering dark prophecies of doom. The group realized they were now facing an entity far more powerful and malevolent than they had ever imagined. Trapped in the cabin, paranoia and fear took hold of Emma and her friends. The walls seemed to close in on them, and the very fabric of reality appeared to warp. Whispers filled the air, sowing discord and distrust among the group. Emma realized that they were not only fighting the malevolent spirit, but also their own growing madness. In a desperate attempt to appease the vengeful spirit, Emma contemplated a sacrifice. The diary hinted at an ancient ritual that required a willing offering, someone who would willingly give their life to save the others. As Emma wrestled with the idea, she faced the moral dilemma of choosing one life to save many. The tension reached its breaking point. Emma, tormented by guilt and fear, made the difficult decision to sacrifice herself. With tear-filled eyes, she bid farewell to her friends, hoping her sacrifice would finally put an end to the nightmare that had befallen them. Emma's friends, devastated by her decision, carried out the ritual of redemption. With heavy hearts, they chanted the ancient incantations, their voices trembling with sorrow. The cabin trembled as if acknowledging the profound sacrifice. In a blinding burst of light, the malevolent spirit was banished, and the cabin fell silent. With the spirit gone, the remaining friends emerged from the cabin, their hearts heavy with grief and loss. The dawn broke, casting a somber light on the woods. Emma's sacrifice became a tale of bravery and selflessness, a reminder of the darkness that could reside even in the most innocent-looking places. Word of the cabin's dark history spread through the town, instilling fear in the hearts of its residents. Parents warned their children never to venture near the woods, and the cabin became a symbol of the town's collective dread. The legend of Emma's sacrifice served as a cautionary tale, reminding everyone of the consequences of meddling with forces beyond human understanding. Years passed, and a group of thrill-seekers, drawn by the legends, decided to explore the cabin. Unaware of its dark history, they entered the woods, their laughter and excitement filling the air. As night fell, the atmosphere grew heavy, and the woods seemed to come alive with malevolence. The malevolent force that had once plagued the cabin stirred once more. Shadows danced among the trees, and the air crackled with supernatural energy. The thrill-seekers, now trapped in the woods, felt an inexplicable sense of dread, as if the very essence of the forest had turned against them. The haunting melody that had once echoed through the cabin drifted through the night air. It beckoned the thrill-seekers, luring them deeper into the woods. Unaware of the danger, they followed the melody, their footsteps guided by an unseen force. In their exploration, the thrill-seekers stumbled upon the same diary that had led Emma and her friends to their doom. Its pages warned of the cursed artifact hidden in the woods, detailing the tragic events that had transpired years ago. The thrill-seekers realized they were facing the same malevolent force that had claimed Emma's life. As the night wore on, one of the thrill-seekers, a girl named Mia, became possessed by the vengeful spirit. Her eyes turned black, and her voice changed, uttering ominous warnings of death and despair. The group, now terrified, realized they were facing an entity far beyond their comprehension. Desperation set in as the thrill-seekers attempted to escape the woods. They ran through the trees, their breaths ragged, and their hearts pounding with fear. The malevolent force seemed to be everywhere, its presence oppressive and suffocating. They realized there was no escape from the nightmare they had stumbled into. The shadows in the woods came alive, twisting and contorting into grotesque shapes. Unearthly whispers filled the air promising unspeakable horrors to those who dared to intrude upon the spirit's domain. The thrill-seekers, now on the verge of madness, saw the very fabric of reality unraveling before their eyes. 
In a desperate bid for survival, the remaining thrill-seekers attempted the same ritual that had once banished the vengeful spirit. With trembling hands, they gathered the necessary ingredients, hoping to appease the malevolent force. Their voices quivered as they chanted the ancient incantations, their words carrying the weight of desperation. Against all odds, the ritual worked. A blinding light engulfed the woods, dispelling the shadows and banishing the vengeful spirit. The trees stood silent, and still, their branches no longer whispering with malicious intent. The thrill-seekers, battered and traumatized, realized they had emerged victorious, breaking the curse that had plagued the woods for years. The morning sun rose on a town forever changed. The woods, once a place of wonder and adventure, stood silent and foreboding. The tale of the cabin and the woods became a cautionary legend, a reminder of the malevolent forces that lurked in the darkness. The surviving thrill-seekers, scared by their ordeal, formed a bond that transcended the supernatural, vowing to protect others from similar fates. Despite the victory, the lingering fear settled over the town. The memory of the cabin and the woods haunted the residents, casting a shadow over their once peaceful lives. Parents warned their children never to venture near the woods, and the mere mention of the cabin's name sent shivers down the bravest spines. Years later, Emma, now an adult, returned to the town. She had heard whispers of the woods' dark past and felt a responsibility to confront the malevolence that had once consumed her friends. Armed with knowledge and determination, she entered the woods once more, hoping to find a way to put the restless spirits to rest. Emma's return seemed to reawaken the malevolent forces that had lain dormant for years. The woods trembled with fury as the spirits recognized her presence. Emma, undeterred by the supernatural onslaught, delved deep into the woods' history, seeking clues that could help her break the curse once and for all. In a climactic confrontation, Emma faced the vengeful spirits that had tormented her and her friends. Their whispers filled the air, accusing her of abandoning them, blaming her for their suffering. Emma, fueled by a newfound courage, stood her ground, refusing to succumb to guilt or fear. In a surprising twist, one of the spirits, a young boy named Samuel, stepped forward. His eyes, once filled with anger, softened with understanding. He revealed the truth, that the curse had been born from a terrible injustice committed against him and his family. Emma, empathizing with his pain, vowed to help him find peace. Emma, with Samuel's guidance, uncovered the dark secret that had bound the spirits to the woods. She confronted the descendants of those responsible for the injustice, forcing them to acknowledge the truth and make amends. With their confession, the spirit's anger began to dissipate, and the wood's malevolence weakened. In a selfless act, Emma offered herself as a sacrifice to the spirits, hoping her willingness to bear their pain would break the curse. The woods quivered, and the spirits, now filled with a mixture of sorrow and gratitude, accepted her sacrifice. In a blinding light, the curse shattered, and the spirits found their long-awaited peace. With the curse broken, the wood's malevolence dissipated. The once haunted trees grew silent, and the shadows that had tormented generations receded. The town, sensing the change, felt a collective sigh of relief. The legend of the cabin and the woods, once a tale of horror, transformed into a story of redemption and forgiveness. Emma's sacrifice became a legend in the town, a tale of bravery and compassion. The woods, no longer a place of fear, stood as a reminder of the power of empathy and the importance of facing the past. The town, forever changed by the events that had transpired, embraced a newfound sense of unity, learning from the mistakes of the past and vowing to protect each other from the darkness that lurked beyond the veil of reality. <laughs>
something called the Game of Shadows. Little did they know, this seemingly innocent game would unleash dark forces that would change their lives forever. The rules were simple but cryptic, speak your deepest fear aloud, and the shadows would answer. Laughter turned to unease as the room grew colder and a shadowy figure materialized, ready to reveal the fears hidden deep within the hearts of the girls. The shadows, a sinister entity born from the girls' fears, started haunting their every move. Whispered secrets filled the air, and glimpses of shadowy figures lurked in the corners of their vision. Fear seeped into their hearts, and they realized they had awakened something beyond their understanding. One by one, the friends began to disappear, leaving behind only echoes of their fear-stricken screams. Sarah and her remaining friends, Lily and Emma, clung to each other, terrified and desperate to unravel the mystery behind the shadows before it was too late. In their search for answers, the girls stumbled upon an old diary hidden beneath the floorboards. It revealed a dark ritual involving a sinister doll, a conduit for the shadow's power. Realization dawned upon them. They had to find the doll and break its connection to the shadows. Armed with newfound determination, the girls ventured into the eerie depths of the woods where the doll was said to be hidden. The forest seemed to come alive with malicious intent, as if nature itself was against them. Unbeknownst to them, the shadows watched their every move, growing stronger with each step. In a clearing deep within the woods, the girls found the doll, its eyes glowing with malevolence. They attempted the ritual described in the diary, hoping to sever the link between the shadows and the doll. However, the shadows intervened, distorting the ritual into something far more sinister. During the distorted ritual, Emma became possessed by the shadows. Her eyes turned pitch black, and her voice echoed with a chilling resonance. She uttered prophecies of doom, foretelling the demise of her friends and the world consumed by darkness. With Emma now a vessel for the shadows, the stakes grew higher. The girls realized they were running out of time before the shadow's influence would spread beyond the sleepover, engulfing the entire town. They would raced against the clock, desperate to find a way to save Emma and stop the shadow's malevolent plan. A haunting melody echoed through the night, drawing the girls toward an abandoned music box in the attic. The melody seemed to seep into their very souls, amplifying their fear. The music box was an artifact connected to the shadows, an object of immense power that needed to be destroyed. Armed with newfound courage, Sarah and Lily confronted Emma, hoping to free her from the shadow's grip. The attic became a battleground of light and darkness as the girls fought for their friend's soul. In a climactic moment, they shattered the music box, releasing a burst of energy that expelled the shadows from Emma's body. As dawn broke, the girls stood in the attic, exhausted but victorious. The shadows, now weakened and scattered, faded into the first light of day. Emma, though scared by the experience, was finally free from their influence. The sleepover, once a night of terror, ended as a testament to friendship's strength in the face of unimaginable darkness. In the days that followed the girls, forever changed by the events of that night, forged an unbreakable bond. The memory of the sleepover haunted them, but they refused to let fear control their lives. Instead, they embraced the courage they found within themselves and vowed to protect others from supernatural threats. Years passed, but the memory of the shadows lingered in the town's consciousness. The girls, now young women, formed a secret society dedicated to combating supernatural forces. They delved into ancient texts and hidden knowledge, always vigilant against the unseen shadows that lurked in the world. One fateful night, Sarah received an urgent message from Lily. The shadows had returned, stronger and more malevolent than ever. They were targeting vulnerable souls, spreading fear and chaos in their wake. The girls knew they had to confront the shadows once again, lest their town be consumed by darkness. The shadows' return sent ripples of fear throughout the town. Strange occurrences plagued the residents, and whispers of shadowy figures filled the night. The girls, now seasoned warriors against the supernatural, recognized the signs and prepared for the battle that loomed on the horizon. 
The haunting melody that had once lured them to the music box echoed through the town. It seemed to seep into every home, infecting the hearts of those who heard it with paralyzing fear. Sarah, Lily, and Emma followed the melody, their determination unyielding despite the terror it invoked. The shadows had a new leader, a malevolent entity that manipulated them like marionettes on strings. It sought to expand its influence, weaving darkness into the fabric of reality itself. The girls realized they were not only fighting the shadows, but also the sinister puppeteer controlling their every move. The battle against the shadows grew more desperate. The girls faced relentless attacks, their courage tested to its limits. They delved into forbidden rituals and ancient artifacts, seeking any advantage against the malevolent forces that threatened to consume their town. In a chilling ambush, the shadows cornered the girls in an abandoned church, a place tainted by the darkness of their presence. The battle that ensued was fierce, shadows clashing with light in a storm of supernatural fury. Despite their exhaustion, the girls fought with unmatched determination, refusing to let the shadows claim victory. In a final showdown, Sarah, Lily, and Emma faced the sinister puppeteer. The entity emerged from the shadows, its form ever shifting and nightmarish. The church trembled as the girls unleashed their most powerful spells and incantations, channeling ancient energies to banish the puppeteer once and for all. As the battle reached its peak, Emma realized the only way to defeat the puppeteer was with a sacrificial ritual. With tears in her eyes, she offered herself, using her own life force to fuel the spell that would vanquish the malevolent entity. The room shook with supernatural power as Emma's sacrifice shattered the puppeteer's hold over the shadows. With the puppeteer defeated, the shadows lost their malevolent intent. They dissipated like smoke in the wind, leaving behind only echoes of their former darkness. The town, once plagued by fear, was finally free from their grasp. The story of Sarah, Lily, and Emma became a legend in the town, a tale of bravery and sacrifice that inspired generations. The secret society they had formed continued to protect the town from supernatural threats, ensuring that the horrors of that long-ago sleepover would never be forgotten. Years later, a new threat emerged, more powerful and cunning than anything the girls had faced before. The town's peace was shattered once again as a malevolent entity, darker and more ancient than the shadows, began to infiltrate the minds of its residents, sowing discord and fear. Sarah, now a seasoned protector of the supernatural, returned to her hometown. She sensed the new threat and knew she had to reunite with her old friends, Lily and Emma, to confront it. Together, they faced a challenge that would test their courage and determination like never before. The trio delved into ancient texts and hidden archives, piecing together the mystery of the new entity. They discovered it was a being from the primordial darkness, a creature that fed on human fear and thrived on chaos. Its goal was to plunge the world into eternal night, where fear reigned supreme. In their research, the girls found a forbidden ritual, a dark pact that could potentially trap the ancient entity. The ritual required a sacrifice of immense power, one that would bind the creature to a prison of its own making. The girls hesitated, knowing the sacrifice required would be unimaginable. As the ancient entity's power grew, storms raged across the town, darkness swallowing the sun and moon alike. The very fabric of reality seemed to fray, and the girls knew they were running out of time. They made the painful decision to perform the ritual, no matter the cost. In a solemn ceremony, Lily offered herself as the sacrifice. Her eyes were filled with determination as she faced the ancient entity, channeling the power of the ritual. The air crackled with supernatural energy as the ritual took hold, trapping the creature within its prison. Lily's sacrifice saved the town, but at a price too heavy to bear. The town mourned the loss of Lily, their brave protector who had given her life to save them all. Sarah and Emma, devastated by the sacrifice, vowed to honor Lily's memory by continuing their mission to protect the town from supernatural threats. The legend of the three friends became a beacon of hope, reminding everyone of the strength found in friendship and sacrifice.
Years passed, and the town remained peaceful. However, whispers of a new darkness on the horizon began to circulate. Sarah and Emma, now seasoned protectors, sensed a resurgence of supernatural activity. The ancient entity, once thought to be imprisoned, was finding a way back into the world, and the girls knew they had to stop it before it was too late. In a climactic battle, Sarah and Emma confronted the ancient entity, now more powerful than ever. The town trembled as the two protectors fought with everything they had, their magic clashing with the creature's darkness. It was a battle of wills, a struggle for the very soul of the town and its residents. In a moment of sheer desperation, Sarah made the ultimate sacrifice. With tears in her eyes, she channeled all her power into a spell, imprisoning the ancient entity within a mirror, a prison of its own reflection. The town was saved, but Sarah's sacrifice meant she would be forever trapped with the entity, ensuring it would never escape again. And so, the town remained safe, but the legend of Sarah, Lily, and Emma lived on, a tale of bravery, sacrifice, and the unbreakable bonds of friendship in the face of unspeakable darkness.